Thank you very kindly. Um, I must begin by conveying the apology on the part of the county assembly for having to engage this distinguished assembly in all these processes. It is not out of the own making of the county assembly. It is a call of necessity. Necessity has dictated that we must come before you as and when time and situations and circumstances arise. A situation has arisen where we have to come before you, honorable members of the Senate, to ask you to do your noble thing of exercising um, oversight over the county government of Meru. I have time and again um, put it on record that the county assembly of Meru and the people of Kenya have a lot of confidence in the manner in which this house conducts its business. It's on that basis, therefore, that we have been able to appear before you severally seeking and pleading for only one thing, that justice be done in the county government of Meru. And what justice are we looking for, honorable members? We are looking for justice of that particular person who is not able to access services, courtesy of bad governance. What justice are we looking for? We are looking for justice of that child we saw who was born on a karai, that child who cannot speak, that child who cannot, whose fate is not even determined. And when the governor is put to task, says, I have just been made aware. How would you take that governor to be a responsible person? How would you take that person to be a person who is capable of en enhancing good governance, delivery of services? How is it that she was not aware that that hospital is not functional? How is it that she is not aware that that hospital or dispensary has a functional maternity wing? She takes no butha to confirm why the hospital was not functional as at then. Even having been made aware as at yesterday, she still says, I am not aware. Is that the governor who is capable of running the county? Is it really the mistake of the part of the county assembly? Or is it the county assembly being invited by the misconduct and the misdeeds of the governor? Can the county government, can the county assembly of Meru County sit pretty and watch things go south? Is it, isn't it their responsibility to exercise oversight over the performance of the county government? Are they wrong when they invite the, the, uh, the Senate to help and assist and facilitate the operation, operationization of, their, um, uh, uh, of the oversight uh, function? That is all what we are asking for. That is all what we are asking for. If we were in the UK setup, this house qualifies to be the House of Lords. It's a house of lords because it's capable of determining where the truth is and where the lie is. Evidence has been led from the county assembly. Grouts were approved by the, first, the mover of the, first, uh, of the impeachment. That it is true the governor has transgressed and violated the constitution. When she was put to task to explain the circumstances that led to the revocation of that C uh, CEO, she simply said, it wasn't me. And how can it be that the governor can be allowed to get away with a forgery? Isn't it a criminal case in the first instance? And who has a burden of proof? The, the person who claims that the signature was forged appeared before the Senate. Her evidence was put through test by cross-examination. And clarification and verification was sought by the members of the of the Senate. Who then is lying? Is it Linda Kawe? Is it Linda Kiome? Or is it the governor? Can the governor be trusted? Put to task and granted an opportunity to bring even the original um, uh, advisory. She simply said it was seated somewhere in Meru. Unfortunately, unfortunately, she mistook where the, the place of the trial. The place of the trial is not in Meru, it's before this Senate. Is, it, is that a conduct that is consistent with innocence? If she was innocent, if it was not forgery, 
Why was it so difficult for her just to bring that one letter? Why could resources not be committed to make sure that as and when she was made aware that that is an issue, that a letter could not be procured 200, 180 kilometers away from the place of her trial? What is she concealing? What is she hiding? Is she hiding scrutiny? Is that conduct again consistent with an innocent man or innocent woman? I beg, uh, I urge you, honorable senators, to find it in our favor that we have proved that particular ground. That the letter that was meant, that the advisory that was meant to rebut our evidence in respect to ground one is a document that is a forgery. In the case of Philomena Mwilu, the Deputy Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, it was held that evidence that is tainted with illegality it cannot be admitted. The admissibility of that evidence is in question. And having read the case of Ombora in the, in the civil appeal number 21 of 2014, the Court of Appeal suggests that this is a quasi-judicial process. And it being a quasi-judicial process, the rules of evidence plays a fundamental role in the manner in which the admissibility of document is, 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 is concerned. I sought leave of this house to have the document placed on record. They took no initiative. Why? Because they wanted to conceal the lie. They wanted to conceal the offense of perjury. They could not withstand the embarrassment that a signature was lifted. It matters not whether the governor is an IT guru. It matters not whether she is techno savvy. It matters that a document was brought before you that is as a result of a forgery. We seek that you find it in our favor that that particular ground was not defended, it was not controverted, and that the ground suffices to meet the test laid down under Article 8181 as read together with Section 33 of the County Government Act. And then what is the threshold in terms of that particular um, charge? The threshold is that of, um, it lies between, um, reason of, um, it lies between um, balance of probability and below, beyond reasonable doubt. That is what the case of Governor Wambora stated. That we are not supposed to prove, the burden of proof is not beyond reasonable doubt. It's not beyond reasonable doubt because this is not a criminal trial. And that distinguishes the case from, what the, from the case that was quoted by Senator Kajuang, that this is not a criminal trial to seek the county assembly to prove the case beyond reasonable doubt to the extent of seeking the intervention of a forensic document examiner. It's on balance of probability. Whom should we believe? Who should we believe? Is it the person who has committed serious transgressions? Is it the person who is not in touch with the county? Is it the person who is in war with all the leaders in the particular in, in the entire county? Is it the lead, is it the person who is not even in good terms with his senator? Whom should we believe? Should we not believe leader? What personal vendetta would leader be having? She is not vying for a seat of governor. It matters not that whether she was a running mate to the previous uh, um, candidate or not. But it matters that an offense was committed. We urge you, honorable senators, to find that, the, that in revoking the appointment of CPA Virginia Kawera, Governor Kawera violated the Constitution. She violated Article, 20, Article, Article 10 of the Constitution on the question of the rule of law. She violated Article 27 on the equality before the law and the equal benefits of the law. That, she was, uh, that Virginia was not subjected to equal protection and equal benefit of the law and Article 27. She equally violated Article 70, Article 50, that she was not given a fair trial or a fair opportunity to defend her case. When, sought, when put to task, 
she attempts to become a, to become a linguistic to to, a, to purport to differentiate between removal and revocation when called to task to read the provisions of section 58 and section 59 of the county government act honorable senators she simply could not distinguish at the end of the day whether a revocation or a dismissal it never followed the due process the county assembly was never involved it violated that particular provision. And for that reason, Governor Kawira must take responsibility. Taking responsibility is not an act of cowardice, it's not an act of weakness, it's an act of saying, yes, I was wrong. It's an act of admitting when somebody is wrong. And that is what Article 10 speaks about, the question of accountability. And that is what Article 73, which Governor Kawira has violated, speaks about. Article 73, Honorable Senators, speaks about a person who holds the office of a governor or any other office in the Republic of Kenya, breathing confidence in that particular office. When Governor Kawira lies blatantly, openly to the whole world that she was able to procure an advisory opinion, who can believe her? Is she breathing confidence in that particular office? Should she not be held to account? Is she not bringing that office to disrepute? Honorable Senators, we submit that that particular charge has been sufficiently prov uh, proved. On the question of the appointment of the chairpersons, again, we prove that we have been able to dispose of the, our burden of not proving this allegation beyond reasonable doubt, but on balance of probability that yes, Governor Kawira has crippled the operations of the Meru County by blatantly failing and ignoring and or neglecting to execute her functions as a chief executive of Meru County. That amounted to the violation of section four of the Public Appointments uh, um, Act in that, that requires uh, when the governor is bestowed with the responsibility of a duty to follow the provisions of the law. Can she be acquitted? How many times is Governor Kawira going to commit transgressions and get away with it? How many times? When she gets away with the transgressions, where do we leave the people of Meru County? Do the people of Meru County equally deserve justice? Should there not be a balance between the people of Meru County? Where should the balance lie? How should the balance swing? In whose favor is the balance swinging? I suggest and propose and submit that the balance swings in favor of the people of Meru County. They deserve justice before this particular, but before this house. They are crying out for justice. They are looking upon you to, to dispense with justice. And there cannot be justice by sending Governor Kawira back to, 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 to Meru. The only justice that can be served, I suggest, is telling her you have failed in your duties, you have neglected in your duties, you have violated the Constitution, you do not know what the Constitution dictates. Remember, she swore to defend this Constitution but she is one of the greatest transgressors of the same document that she's seeking solace and reprieve from. Honorable Senators, Governor Kawira has come before you with dirty hands. She deserves no favor. She deserves no kindness. She deserves no kindness before this particular house, before this Senate. She has come to you with dirty hands. She is not even remorseful that a toddler was born in a karai when there is just an adjacent health facility. If, we shall, if we, there will be no any other reason for sending Governor Kawira home, please remember the fate of that particular child. Remember the fate of that particular mother who got embarrassed on that particular day. Remember the interpretation that was done that Men and women had to make sure that young children do not, go to, do not go near that naked woman to see her nakedness. How many embarrassments will this house be treated to? Isn't that something that we need all to take cognizance of? Was that video proving failure of service delivery 
who is responsible of delivering those services if it is not Governor Kawira, who has proved on oath that she has failed? Who else should we hold accountable? Who else should we hold accountable? Should she even be allowed to hide behind the cultural card? She has said and submitted that it's the culture of the Meru people to become and to, 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 to look down upon women. I believe honorable senators who are present before this honorable house, including the senator of Meru, is a family man. There must be a woman in that particular house. If the senator is a misogynist, how does he live with his wife in his house? How does he live with his daughters in his house? If it is true, the people of Meru are masculine, how do they mot uh, multiply and perpetuate the Meru generation? That is a blatant lie. She shouldn't be allowed to hide behind issues that are not founded either in law or in fact. She must be told it's now time for you to go. She must be told, we have given you two opportunities, you have failed to reform. She must be told, the Senate has listened to you severely, but you have failed to conform. She cannot conform, she will not conform, she will not reform because she is not a reformist. She, don't, she does not understand the story of a reformist. Or what she understands, as indicated in her uh, submissions and evidence is that the county government, the county assembly is telling the story, the story of us, the, the, the single story. Which other single story have we told, uh, told the Senate other than the single story of the violations of the Constitution? Which other single story have we told this House other than the story of the suffering of the people of Meru County? That is a single story. We have no other story. It's a single story of the suffering of the people of Meru County. They are craving upon you, honorable senators, to save them. They are craving upon you to save them from all these blatant violations. On the question of refusal to implement the recommendations by the county assembly, you might want to ask yourself why the failure it was not a coincidence. It is by design. Because it's the code between the governor, the chief of staff, and the county secretary. That web must be in existence for Governor Kawira to exist. That is why it was impossible for her to implement the report recommended by the county assembly. Those are her code If you find any mismanagement, any embezzlement, any uh, uh, failure of good governance, Look at that web. It must be maintained for Governor Kawira to continue um, transgressing the county. It must be maintained for Governor Kawira to continue perpetuating the suffering of people of Meru. Why is it so difficult for her to implement that report? Why is it difficult for her to see that there was necessity for her to implement that report as recommended by an equal arm of, the, of, of her government? The answer is one. She needs that network for her to perpetuate illegalities that she's perpetuating currently in Meru County. When put to task whether the reports and why they were not uh, implemented, she simply said, they were not sent to me. Evidence was led that yes, they were, they were submitted to her, they were received in her office, and she blatantly refused to act to it. Why I think and submit that she does not understand the weight behind accountability, she does not understand the weight behind transparency, she does not understand the reason why there is a rule of law in this country. Count two on misconduct, yes, she acknowledged that she made those particular statements. She said, yes, she made those statements about the 86 million. She acknowledged misleading the people. She acknowledged that there was no only one account and that whatever she was saying was falsehood. If a leader cannot be held account for the statement that they make, then where is this country going? We must tell the current generation and the future generation 
that it is important to speak the truth, that it is important to stick to the way of the truth. That is what is right, that is what is just. Did Governor Kawira maintain the path of truth? Did she stick to the path of, the path of truth? Did she do what is right in the circumstances? We submit that she, 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 she willingly veered away from the path of truth. The evidence of the window and may he rest in peace was never tested. None of them cross examined that lady. Her evidence went uncontroverted. Is it usual for a defense counsel not to test the veracity of the evidence of a witness who is putting up a case and a grievous, uh, a serious case such as this one? It is not usual. They only knew that they have nothing to cross-examine that lady on, and that whatever she said is therefore truth. And as such, we submit that Article, 20, Article 10 again was proved on the, on the uh, on, uh, which speaks to values of um, and, and principles of governance. Among them, the value of good governance the value of integrity, the value of accountability, the value of transparency. How can a person lead a county if she's, she, has, she's, she has a deficit of integrity, if she has a deficit of accountability, if she has a deficit of transparency, if she cannot respect the rule of law, how can she lead the county? The county performance is premised on the laws. It's premised on the rule of law. If she does not respect that rule of law, is she then worth her salt? Look at Article, Article 73 of the Constitution. It's paramount when seeking to establish whether or not this, provision, this um, allegation has been substantiated. It speaks about the authority assigned to a state officer. It speaks about public trust must be exercised in a manner that is consistent and demonstrate respect for the people. Does that video and the conduct that was exhibited before this assembly demonstrate respect for the people? Does it bring honor to the nation and the dignity of the office of the governor? Does it promote confidence, public confidence in the integrity of that office? We submit that the conduct exhibited by the, deputy, by the, by the governor through the evidence of the witness that was not controverted, flies over the face of Article 73, and that does not breathe confidence, it does not demonstrate respect for the people, it does not breathe, uh, in, uh, indicate integrity, it does not bring honor to that office. If she cannot honor that office, why should she hold it? If she cannot honor that office, why should he keep it? If she, has, she cannot honor that office, and she has no dignity for it, why should she keep it? Honorable Senators, I urge you to find it that that provision has been proved and has been substantiated. On the question of, uh, of paying Kiambi's um, Christus Manyara, it must be remembered that she has admitted on oath that this Kiambi Christus is a person who works in the, in the office of the county, of the county governor. She has admitted on oath that evidence has been led that he is one of those people who are accused for the murder of the, and the slain of a sniper. Put to task why she has continu he has continu he continued to earn his full salary while still in custody for six months, she simply said, it wasn't me. When will Governor Kawera uh, learn to be responsible? When will she ever learn to own up for a mistake that is so glaring such as this one? She takes no cognizance that money was spent unlawfully. She takes no cognizance of the provisions of Article, 1, Article 201 of the Constitution. Honorable Senators, Article 201 is paramount in the manner in which the resources of this nation are governed. Article 201 speaks about the principles of public finance, and it provides that there must be prudent use of public finances. Was this one, use, one way of prudent use of those resources? 
Why should a person who is in remand continue to earn a full salary? Why should actions not be taken for a person who perpetuates these violations? It speaks about openness and accountability, including financial integrity. Was that the best way of applying the meager resources? Honorable Senators, as I pen off, I urge you to fight it, that, that this act and conduct must be attributed to the governor. There is clear nexus that the governor knew that this person is in custody, having worked in his office, it then is responsible of the governor not to know that a person attached to, his, to her office is not in office for six months. How, res how responsible is that governor? If the governor cannot learn that a person is, who is attached to, his, to her office is not present, how can she be allowed to get away with this? This is a governor who is incapable of running the affairs of Meru County. We ask you, honorable senators, and we humbly submit that you pave way for her to have another person manage the affairs. This is not about being a woman. Accountability is not being a woman. There's nothing to do with being a woman when you are called to order. We are all called to allegiance, to play allegiance to the Constitution. It's so easy to tell a lie, but so hard to maintain the same. Telling a lie is the easiest bit, but telling the truth and pretending that you are lying is so hard. Success and any other major, uh, success requires that an individual must accept responsibility. Kawira Mwangaza must accept that the county is not functional. It is not functional courtesy of her misdeeds. Accepting that one has failed is not a sign of weakness. Accepting that one has failed is not a sign of weakness. It's rather a signal that is being directed towards that particular person to check her true north. As I sum up, accountability is when you accept responsibility for the consequences of your actions. Res accountability is when you accept conse consequences for your actions. And the consequences for the actions, as proved by the county assembly, demands that Governor Kawira must go. As I sum up, and I want to repeat what I earlier submitted, that for there to be proper running of the county government of Meru, Kawira Mwangaza must go. For there to be services proper delivery of services in the county, uh, county government of Meru. Kawira Mwangaza must go. For the women of Meru County to access maternity services, Kawira Mwangaza must go. For the babies of Meru to be saved from the embarrassment of being born in Akarai, Kawira Mwangaza must go. For proper running of the Meru County, Kawira Mwangaza must go. It's only proper for her to leave, to pack and go. She has demonstrated incompetence. She has demonstrated in, uh, her, in, uh, her inability and incapacity to deliver services to the people of Meru. We urge you, honorable senators, to fight it in our favor and send Governor Kawira home. Let her not hide behind other leaders let her not say that political leaders have instigated this motion. She has not brought as a witness any person, including any affidavit swearing that the senator of Meru County is behind this um, impeachment. Let her not play the victimization card. Let her, her, let her not hide behind victimization. Let her take responsibility for her, for her actions. Na kila mtu ata uchukua Muzigo wake mwenye we Council, 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 this is a house of rules I submit yeah. Council for Governor, the floor is yours